friends out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man, and as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. Today, I'm going to do a unique video that might be helpful to the up-and-coming gigging cover band guitar or instrumental or musician. And I thought about this because as I do these covers, I can determine from my own personal experience uh, what artists or groups, and that's the title of the video, what artists or groups songs are easy to play and what artists and groups songs are difficult to play. So uh, as I've been playing these covers, there are just some artists when someone asks me to do a cover on this particular artist or group, I'm like, whoa, because it's going to be sometimes a lot of work that's involved, you know. So I'm, I have some songbooks right here. You can't see them there off camera, but I have two piles. I have the easy pile I got the, and the, the difficult pile. So I'm going to be pulling from, from, from both piles as I do this presentation. And the first artist is Stevie Wonder. Uh, if you're going to do any, any Stevie Wonder songs, you better bring your A game because Stevie uses a lot of jazz chords. And I personally look at Stevie Wonder as a jazz musician as opposed to an R&B or pop guy because the majority of the chords that Stevie Wonder uses in his songs are jazz chords. So, uh, you know, so uh, I kind of look at him more so of a jazz artist. And what's kind of difficult about Stevie Wonder stuff is uh, he's notorious for modulation, meaning that within some point in the song, he's changing keys on you. And Ribbon and Scat was like a nightmare. When it came out, everybody that was getting married wanted us to play it at their banquet. And it's like, oh, no, because that song modulates at least three different times. I think more. But I know it changes keys at least three different times. And that's just a rough kind of song to get through. And Stevie Wonder is also is. The master of weird timing. You know, some of the songs you're in the middle of and you think you're almost done and all of a sudden uh, here's this weird accent or just, just drop out. So uh, Stevie Wonder is definitely uh, on the list of artists that have difficult songs to get through, but they're great songs. So, And I appreciate that because it makes you a better musician when you're given something difficult and you can get through it and, and complete the task. So Stevie Wonder makes the difficult pile or the hard stuff to play. Is out of the easy pal, Chardet. I love Chardet stuff. I mean, if we were to do just a whole Chardet set, it would be like heaven because Chardet uses only like three or four chords in their songs. And it's kind of, they remind me of Chic. Or she, they, her group reminds me of Chic because Chic is very simple but yet effective because it's not always about the instrument or the, 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 the chords or the structure is about the arrangement, you know, because they take three chords and just really add a lot of stuff within those three chord songs. So uh, she's very easy to play, and I love playing her stuff. Okay, pulling from Difficult File. These guys, Earth, Wind, and Fire, they're the master of a bunch of chords in one song and changing keys and these weird accents, you know. So uh, Stevie, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire is another one that's not... Uh, walk in the park, but again, you love their stuff because you, you can tell by just listening to it the type of effort that they've put into it, where they're just not going to throw out a three-chord song and call it a day. I mean, their stuff is pretty intricate, and it's usually good to have the songbooks and the sheet music to try to follow their stuff. Same thing with Stevie Wonder. It's kind of hard to pick up all that stuff back here because he's using weird chords and jazz chords. Earth, Wind, Fire is another one, but I love this stuff. Pull it from the Easy Foul. One of my favorite new artists, and actually, technically, he's no longer new. He's been on at least seven years. But uh, Craig Davis, I love his stuff. I mean, I love the melodies. Uh, I love the compositions, and they're basically major, major sevens, minor sevens. That's usually the majority of his chords. No slash chords, no weird chords. Kind of straight to the point. Uh, just about anything in the songbook I can pick up at any given time and play it because it's just that simple but yet very effective and very good material. So moving next to the difficult pile, rest in peace, Luther Vandross. When I first started to read sheet music and I forgot what Luther Vandross sung it was, uh, the particular songbook I was looking at had the courtesy of listing all the chords at the top that's in the song and then of course the chords throughout the song. And not too many chord books do that. So it gave you everything that was going on in the song up top so you could take a look at it. And I kid you not, I forgot what song it was, but I, I counted 13 chords. That's a whole lot of chords for one song. 
that basically uh, makes up the entire any entire R. Kelly songbook. And I'm not trying to knock R. Kelly because I said in my other video, no R. Kelly, he's a very talented guy, but uh, a lot's going on in Luther Vandross stuff. And what I notice also when I post any Luther Vandross covers, I quickly see the view numbers accumulate. And that just simply tells me that a lot of people want to know uh, what Luther's doing, you know, musically, chord-wise, because it's hard to pick up some of his stuff by ear because he uses a lot of slash chords, too, and just a lot of chords within one song. So uh, another one, you better bring your A game when you're stepping up to the plate to do some Luther Vandross covers because they won't be easy. Okay, pull them from the simple file. Real simple. This song, this songbook actually has one song in there that has just one chord. And actually, it took four guys to write that one chord song. So uh, this is a walk in the park, you know, the Justin Timberlake stuff, nothing but major and minor and major seven chords. That's it. And again, not taking away from their creativity or their or their uh, their ability to be good artists, because you know I'm a big fan of Justin Timberlake. He's a very talented guy. But nowadays, the majority of people that are writing for these new artists, they're not really seasoned musicians and and, and writers. I mean, you can tell by just a simple one, two, three chords. You know, this is just kind of elementary. And that's just kind of the way that it is in today's music. Uh, the majority of these writers don't, know, know, don't even know what a bridge is, you know, modulation, because they do none of that in these new, these new, art, these new artists. Okay, taken from the difficult power. India Aria. Uh, I love the fact that she has put out a songbook for just about every CD she's released because... You don't really appreciate sometimes the artist's creativity until you see the sheet music and see the chords they're using because she, she uses such beautiful exotic chords, not just the simple chords. And what I love about her song books and the people that publish her song books, International Music Publication and Warner Brothers, is the diagrams, the guitar diagrams in the song are on the point with the record. I mean, it's the actual chord uh, inversions that she's using on the record and when you play it and listen to the record as you playing it you say wow this is on point so they go to a lot of uh, I want to say extreme a, a lot of uh, effort better word to make sure that you're getting your money's worth because everything in this book is what's being played on the record I kid you not you know I love doing her covers and she's gonna be a future Hall of Famer that's my prediction okay that we pull in from the easy file. Phil Collins. You know, surprisingly enough, the majority of Phil Collins stuff is just major, minor, minor seven chords. That's about it. Sustained chords, a few slash chords, but still pretty simple. And I'm a huge fan of Phil Collins. Okay, pull it from the difficult file. These guys. I did my, I think my third largest video per view is how deep is your love by Earth? I mean, by uh, the Bee Gees. And if you look at the video, check it out. You'll see my daughter's cat in the background, kind of sleeping, close to the songbook. And it was kind of cute. You know, she snuck into the frame. I didn't even know she was back then. I'm playing. She's just sleeping away. But anyway, uh, what makes uh, the Bee Gees pretty difficult is they're kind of like Luther Vandross. They incorporate a lot of chords in their songs. I mean. It's very rare that I have to do this because normally when I go to cover, do a cover, I dissect it. I know uh, what chords you use in the verse, what chords you use in the, in the, in the uh, verses and chorus and changes. So I don't really have to rely on actually looking at the sheet music as I play because at that point I've kind of taken it in. But the Bee Gees is one of the few groups where I have to have the songbook out, out in front to keep following it because there's so many different chord changes that you can't remember them all. And then some of the, the accents, you know, where they place these chords, that's another thing. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of tricky. You know, so uh, my hat's off to the Bee Gees because the Bee Gees have written a lot of great songs. And uh, it's, it's, it's a treasure and an honor to be able to, to find some of their songbooks and be able to just keep them. Because, uh, again, a lot of movement in their songs. Okay, easy one. Brian McKnight. Love Brian McKnight. He's a very talented multi-musician and a great singer. 
you know, I, I said in one of my other videos that he, to me, should have been the next Luther Vandross, but unfortunately, him and some of the people in his camp, the PR people, made some bad choices that really kind of took him out of that whole thing that he could be his predecessor. So it's unfortunate. Uh, songs are pretty simple. Uh, just major, minor, minor nines, minor sevens chords. And every now and then you get a, a weird jazz chord, but pretty easy to get through. Okay. Difficult. Steely Dan. Steely Dan is up there with Earth, Wind & Fire and Stevie Wonder. Actually, I think they, I think Steely Dan, to me, in my personal opinion, is the most difficult. Because a lot of jazz chords because these are jazz cats, you know. Uh, again, you know, when you're trying to play their stuff, uh, you better bring your A game. And the songbook because it's difficult to get through all of those songs like Peg and Asia without having the songbook and knowing the actual chords because they're very hard to pick up by ear because they're using a lot of different chords. You know, uh, inversions. So, you know, you definitely want to get a hold to uh, their songbook. Babyface, if you can, is kind of somewhere in the middle. He's not, his, his compositions are not extremely difficult and they're not easy. What I love about Babyface, and I've dubbed him the master of the B section. And what a B section is, is it's part of the verse, but somewhere in the point of the verse, it changes uh, chorus and the melody changes. I love those types of songs because it helps the vocalists express themselves even more. So uh, I would kind of put Babyface somewhere in the middle. Uh, chords are not that really difficult. Major, minor, minor seven, sustain, a few slash chords here and there. And every blue moon he throws in these weird jazz chords, but it's not that often. So he's somewhere in the middle. I love Babyface stuff. Okay, the Jackson 5. Now, people kind of laugh when I say that because when you think of them, you think of young guys doing bubblegum music, but I didn't look at it that way as I got older. How I looked at it was this way. These are young guys, but, but the people that are writing for them are not young guys, and the writing that they've done for the Jackson 5 is pretty uh, elaborate. It's not simple. Uh, you know, you do have to sometimes have the sheet music, uh, the arrangement of these songs, you know, because again, when you think of the Jackson 5, you think of these young guys singing, but it's what they're singing, which you kind of want to kind of focus in on. And, you know, just a lot of great writing. And it, what makes it difficult is just, again, the arrangement, because the chords themselves are not really that difficult. And there's some parts in some of these songs where there's a lot of chords are doing within one short phrase. So they've earned the, the, the uh, pile of the category of the piano game. player would play. And that's the same way that I play, because if you notice on my cover of Fallen, I do a lot of chords that are matching with the, the piano player and not so much the guitar. Because what's interesting about song music or sheet music is, unless the song was composed on the guitar, and a lot of songs like Al Jarreau stuff is composed on piano, and my DVD number four will be available because I'm sorry for the backlog of people that ordered it. I'm going to be completing it because there was just more stuff I want to put into it. And on this video, DVD, it talk, I talk about how to kind of break down sheet music quickly and not be intimidated by it. And I go into detail about how you can determine if the composition was written on piano versus guitar. And uh, I go into that and I, and I tell you how you can determine that. And when you are dealing with a song that's you can tell that it was composed on piano like Stevie Wonder stuff. Uh, it's different for the guitar player. Uh, the inversions are different, it sounds different. Sometimes it's not really a good idea or it doesn't sound really good when you play it on guitar when it's a piano ballad. You know, so you know, just keep that in mind. But Luke, uh, Al Jarreau stuff is very, uh, I, won't, I won't say busy, it's very well arranged. You know, again, uh, he's one of those artists where uh, you better bring your A game and it's not very, you can't really uh, pick up all of his stuff by ear. Because there's some artists you can listen to and you can tell what chords and you're done. But Al Jarreau, uh, no. You know, it's, it's best to have the sheet music. And this particular book uh, run about anywhere from $50 to $120 on eBay or Amazon. I got lucky one night because I kept watching and looking for it and I got it for $30. And it's, it's well worth its money because uh, a lot of great songs from Al Jarreau. And again, you get to actually see all these chords and just the arrangements of the song. So you don't have to guess.
you know, so Algero Disco Pal. Somewhere in the middle. Erica Badu. Uh, her songs don't have a lot of chords, but some of the chords that she uses in some of her songs are jazzy, you know, like uh, the song On and On. Uh, the chord that's very dominant is a very strange, uh, kind of a jazz chord. To be exact, it's the B7 sharp 5. And I did a cover of this, and it was the, the finger position was killing my hand. But a big fan of Erica Badu. I love her stuff. She's not one of those uh, R&B artists. She's just putting together two or three chord songs. But uh, difficult. Well, actually not difficult, just unique. Okay, we're almost done here. Very difficult. Anita Baker, again, if you, you step into Anita Baker stuff, you better bring your A game because the writing and arrangement doesn't get any better than this. Uh, I first had this book on eBay. I think I paid like 12 bucks. Then I sold it because at that time I couldn't, I couldn't handle, you know, I couldn't hang with, you know, the, the guitar stuff or the, the chords. And that just lets me know how bad of a guitar player I've become. So uh, I, I bought another one. I got it for 20 But this book here is going for way anywhere from $75 to $200 on eBay or Amazon because everybody wants to know what she's doing. Because, again, she's very difficult to pick up by ear. So uh, you definitely want to have the sheet music in front of you. And uh, it's not, well, it's a combination of a lot of jazz chords and a lot of chords and a lot of movement in her stuff. So uh, definitely difficult one, but helps you make it be, become a better musician. But I'm going to wrap this up because uh, I might do a part two. Hope this was entertaining and informative. And until next time, take care. And I appreciate the subscriptions and the comments and the views.